the founder of America, Leif Erikson. Leif Erikson had founded America, Newfoundland, fucking Canada, North America. Does North America not count as America? You gotta go to the Caribbean. I mean, fucking Columbus didn't even find goddamn Florida. He just found a pile of islands south of Florida. So Columbus, you know, just left thinking, well, here's a fucking bunch of islands out here. No, it's a big landmass up north, you stupid fuck. And so, you know, same thing with Leif Erikson, right? He might have just thought it was just a small little landmass, not, you know, something that was connected to, uh, you know, uh, South America too. So, um, yeah, so Leif Erikson had founded America in 1000 AD. Leif Erikson, which would be a Norwegian Viking. My people are the Sweden, the Swedish and the Danish Vikings, the Dutch and the English and the Germans and the and African. I got 11% African black blood in me. But I also have Swedish blood and Danish blood, which I did not know about. So Leif Erikson isn't my Viking ancestors, but it's like the, you know, cousin of a cousin of a cousin of, you know, Sweden and Norway. They're Norwegian Vikings, so they're just like right, you know, next door. Leif was the son of the famous Eric the Red, who set up the first Viking settlement in Greenland in the late 980s CE. After his father's death, just after 1000 CE, Leif succeeded him as chieftain of Greenland because his son Thorkel has succeeded him by 1025 CE. It's fair to assume that Leif Erikson, <clears throat> son of Eric the Red, had died by then, though it's unsure exactly when Leif's Larger than life reputation mostly stems from the 13th century CE Icelandic Vinland sagas, the independently composed saga of the Greenlanders and Eric the Red Saga, which tells the story of how he kitted out the first Norse expedition to Newfoundland and the surrounding areas in present day Canada. Here, we, he discovered, among others, the grapevines that inspired the Vikings' name for the area of Vinland. Old Norse Vinland, which means wine land. In fact, most of what we know about Leif Erikson's come from those two sagas. Saga of the Greenlanders and Eric the Red. The Eric the Red saga. So Leif Erikson discovered America. He's born in Iceland around 970 to 980 CE. So wait, I thought he was Norwegian. His ancestors are Norwegian, but he's fucking Icelandic. I didn't know that. He's basically born in America anyway. Shit, in Iceland, I mean, that's like just a hop, skip, and a jump, right? Iceland, Greenland, Newfoundland. Newfoundland. Newfoundland at the uh, Leance Ox Meadows. Leif's ancestry lives in Jaren, Norway, where his grandfather Thorvald, son of Asvald. <laughs> Thorvald, son of Asvald. Alf, Alfsons. Got into a degree of trouble by killing somebody. He packed up his family and fled to Iceland. <laughs> oh, that damn Thorvald. Son of Asvald. <laughs> Where the Norse had been present since the last quarter of the 9th century CE there. That's the end of the 800s. Thorvald died, leaving his son Eric to carve out a life for himself in Iceland. Eric, who would officially have been Eric Thorvaldson. But is better known as Eric the Red, probably given a none too subtle hint about his hair and beard color. Married local Thjod Hild. Thjod Hild, the daughter of Ju Joe Rund Atlas' son, whose family had Irish blood somewhere down the line. This Irish connection was not uncommon byproduct of the Vikings' exploits in the British. Isle starting in the late 9th century CE, Eric and Thjodhild. Thjodhild seemed to have settled down and built a farm they called Eric Stotter near Vadenshorn on the Breda Bredafjord in the west of Iceland, which is probably where Leif Erikson was born. Leif Erikson had two brothers, Thorstein. Thorstein and Thorvald, as well as a sister, Freydis, who, according to Eric the Red Saga, was the illegitimate daughter of Eric's A Quiet Life, was not in the cards for Leif's family. As Farrick, his father, Eric, followed in grandfather Thorvald's footsteps and being exiled from murder to around 982 CE. 
This time, however, there's no known North settlement in the West that they could easily move, <clears throat> easily move to. Following rumors of land that had been sighted west of, of Iceland, though Eric the Red sailed there, allegedly become the first Viking, the first Viking to set foot on Greenland, coining the name to entice more people to come and settle there. Greenland, it's so green. He founded what would become the Eastern Settlement on Greenland's southern tip around 985 CE, picking the choicest morsel of land for himself and his family and setting up a farm called Bratalid in the confidently named Eric's Fjord. Young Leaf thus grew up there within a pioneering lifestyle while around him Greenland was further explored and settled. The people surrounding him in this initial colonization of Greenland would have come from Iceland and were mostly chieftains and rich farmers who owned their own ships. They owned their own ships. Am I right? What's going on? What you want to get in here? Can't you give me a goddamn second? Ah, oh, mostly chieftains, rich farmers who owned their own ships, probably counting 500 individuals. They set up stock farms with the domestic animals they brought along in their ships in the inner Fjords, where land was comparatively fertile. Leif Erikson hears of land sighting story back in Greenland, launches expedition, reaches a glacier-covered stone slab of land. He and his crew name Hellu Land, which means stone slab land, likely northern Labrador. Northern Labrador or and Baffin Island, and then a flattened forested land they called Markland, which means forest land, most likely central Labrador. Eventually, they come upon, uh, come upon a lush land where they found a base they named Leafs Booths. It is while exploring, uh, exploring the surrounding lands, especially further south, the Leaf Erickson and his men discover timber <laughs> and the grapes that inspire Vinland's name. 1961, the remains of a Norse settlement was discovered at Leance Ox Meadows on the northernmost tip of Newfoundland's northern peninsula in present-day Canada. Eight turf-walled dwellings, including what looks like chieftains' halls, other large halls, Similar halls and huts, all with large storage spaces, large storage spaces, and some with workshops built in, were uncovered in date to between 980 to 1020 CE. They thus fit the saga's time frames. A ring pin of the Dublin Viking Viking type was found there too, tying in with information from the sagas about the Viking explorers having had family connections in Ireland, such as Leif's mother having Irish ancestry. The settlement, which could have housed between 70 to 90 people, was set up for work crews who probably used the site as a gateway location, overwintering there, and then launching expeditions to other regions where they gathered timber, grapes, furs, and other valuable resources. These could then be stored at Leance Ox Meadows until they could be ferried back to Greenland. It was in use for perhaps less than a decade before a combination of the two extravagant distance from there to Greenland and competition with natives gave the venture the not worth the hassle stamp. Icelandic sagas claim that Bjorn was the ancestor of the House of Munso, the line of kings that ruled in Sweden until 1060. 1060. Isn't that when that stencil fucking guy so B Bjorn was king of Sweden until motherfucking Stencil out of goddamn Ladoga. The wife of one of the goddamn uh, Kivian Rus princes, Oleg, fucking Yar Yaroslav the Wise, maybe? I don't know. Who the hell knows? Who the hell knows? So there you go. That's all about Vadim the Brave. Wait, what? That wasn't about Vadim the Brave at all. That was about Leif Erikson discovering America. This motherfucker's off his rocker.